I am telling him or her. To observe is the most important thing in life. Not tell the observation how to observe, but to learn the art of observing without any distortion, without any motive, without any purpose, just to observe, in that there is tremendous beauty, because then there is no distortion. You see things clearly as they are. But if you have, if you make an abstraction of it into an idea, and then through that idea observe, then it's a distortion. Right? So, we are merely, freely, without any distorting factor entering into our observation, observing consciousness. So consciousness begins to reveal its, its, its own totality. There is nothing hidden. It is because the the content, which is our hurt, our greed, our envy, our happiness, our beliefs, our ideologies, all that is the makes up consciousness. The past traditions, the present scientific or uh, factual traditions and so on, so on, so on. All that is our consciousness. To observe it without any movement of thought. Because thought has put all the content of our consciousness, thought has built it. When thought comes and says, this is right, this is wrong, this should be that, you are still within the field of consciousness, you are not going beyond it. So one has to go, one has to understand very clearly the, the place of thought. Thought has its own place in the field of knowledge, technology and all the rest of it. But thought has no place whatsoever in the psychological structure of man. When it does, then confusion begins, then contradiction, then all the struggles, the images about you and another, all the rest of it follows. So the art, as we said, art, the meaning of art means to put everything in its right place, not the painter, not the sculptor or the poet, but in our daily life, to put everything in its right place. That is, that's art. So, can, can you observe, can you observe your consciousness and does it reveal its content? Not, not bit by bit, but the totality of its movement. Then only is it possible to go beyond it. Not through analysis, which we talked about, because analysis implies the analyzer and the analyze, the division, the problem of time in division. And when you analyze, each analysis must be totally complete. If there is not complete analysis, then the imperfection of that analysis is carried over to the next analysis. So the imperfection grows more and more and more. You understand? Like practicing on the piano and practicing the wrong note all the time. Right? So that's, that is our inquiry. 
and in inquiry. Can you observe without any movement of the eye? Because the eye, the eye, has effect on the brain. You can observe it for yourself. When you, when you keep your eyeballs completely still, observation becomes very clear, because the brain is quietened. You can experiment with this. This is not a trick for something further. It's like going to a guru and learning a few tricks. There is a lovely story, I must tell you about it. A young man goes to a guru, a teacher, and says, Please tell me what truth is. I have searched everywhere, nobody seems to be able to tell me, and I have come to you. Please tell me what truth is. And the Guru says, Stay with me, be with me. And so the the pupil, disciple, (laughs) stays with him for about fifteen years watching him, all, you know, all the rest of it. At the end of fifteen years he says, Good Lord, I have learnt nothing. And so goes to the Guru and says, I am so sorry, you have taught me nothing, I haven't, I haven't found truth, I am going to leave you and go to that Guru, the other one. And so after five years he comes back, he says, At last I have learnt. And the Guru says, What have you learnt? You see that river? I can walk across it, without a boat, without anything. I can walk, tread on the water. And the Guru says, you can do that for tuppence if you take that little boat. I think you should bear that story in mind when you approach any gurus. So, can you observe without any movement of thought, interfering with your observation? It is only possible when the observer realises that which he is observing are one. The observer is the observed. Anger is not different from me. I am angry. I am jealousy. So there is no division between the observer and the observed. That is the basic reality one must capture. And to observe without the observer, just to observe, then you will see the whole of consciousness, the whole of it, begins to reveal itself without your making an effort. Which means, in that total observation, There is the emptying or going beyond all the things that thought has put together, which is our consciousness. The reality which thought has put, has made, is not truth, it is the reality of thought. 